so grumpy. You. Night. Oh, today was a lazy day. I uh, showered, washed my hair, and that was it. Didn't curl it, didn't do any makeup, so I'm in the raw tonight. <laughs> and I don't care. Say hi, Elvira. This is my little old witch. She is such a meanie. She's 13 years old, and she is such a grump. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, there's my little girl. So, anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good night. Uh... Hi, kitty. Say hello. Hello, kitty. Oh, God, I just realized that. Hello, kitty. Anyway, so, guys, hope you're doing well tonight. Hope you're thinking positive thoughts out there, which I know can be hard in today's world, but I hope you are. Tonight, I had somebody, I had somebody ask me to uh, talk about girlfriends, okay? Your friends. Um... I don't really don't know where to begin with this one. It's kind of, you know, I guess, I guess what I, what I'd really like to talk about is, um, what is, what makes a good friend, you know, good girlfriend, your, 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 your buddy, your, you know, your girlfriend. Um, I don't know. My view is that uh, a friend is somebody who's there for you through the good and the bad. Not just the good times, because that's just a fair weather friend. And a friend is somebody who um, you you know you can count on. You know that you can count on no matter what. Who's not going to judge you. Who's not going to put you down. Who's not going to always be criticizing you, making you feel bad for whatever. If there's anything that they don't like about what's going on in your life, or whatever, they'll be a good friend to sit and talk to you and say, hey, listen, you know, I... I'm kind of concerned about this and talk to you. They won't make a jab at you, you know, a rude little jab. And there'll be somebody who takes the time to actually have a friendship with you. And I say this because, you know, there are people out there who they say you're, they're your friend, but they never make any time for you. And I think we have to learn when a friendship is toxic and when we need to let it go, when we need to hang on. Um, if you've got a girlfriend out there who's just, you know, Oh, a friend out there who's who causes you stress, who makes you feel like, what are you doing with this person as a friend? Yeah, you already have your 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 red flag there. Um, you gotta you gotta stop and think about what this friend is doing for you and uh, how they're making you you know feel in life. Um, friends could be you know that can be a really touchy little situation there. I mean, obviously you have to have patience, you have to have forgiveness. No friendship is perfect. But you have to have some common sense and realize that um, stop and look at their friendship. If, if, if you see, if you're not feeling good when you're around this person, uh, that's your clue that it's time to get rid of the person. I mean, if you talk to somebody and um, let's, say, let's say you've got a friend and she's doing something that really bothers you, well, you need to talk to that friend about it very nicely, not rudely or sarcastically, but nicely. And if the French, if she, you know, if, the, if it doesn't change where you're comfortable with the relationship, then that's, that's your, that's your cue to let go. I mean, you need to just let go. Um, girlfriends are supposed to be somebody who lift you up, who make you feel good, who make you glad that they're in your life and that you're in their life and, and they're there for you to, for all the bad times, you know, not just the good. You know, when you're sick, they make an effort to either come over and see you, maybe make you some soup or call you, you know, how are you doing, is there something you need in case, you know, maybe you're a single woman and you don't have anybody at home to help you, you know, maybe they can come over, help you or pick something up for you, whatever. Uh, that's what a good friend does. Um, if you've got the kind of friend who's, you know, bossy and controlling, wants everything her way, at, you know, on her schedule, how she wants it to be done, then that's not a good friend, okay? It's definitely not a good friend. I'll give you an example. Uh, an ex-friend, someone I just let go of recently. Um, I thought she was going to be the greatest friend in the world. I really did. I thought, wow, we're going to be great friends. And then um, things started happening that made me realize maybe not so much. Um, for one thing, she was far too religious for me, far too religious. And don't get me wrong, I have no, you know, nothing against anybody who's religious and believes in what they believe in. But don't shove it down my throat. And don't be throwing it into the mix constantly. That was starting to get old. We couldn't, 
we can talk about anything without it referring to Jesus, God, Satan, or whatever. And it, it, it got old real fast. I didn't like that. Then I realized that, you know, okay, I would call her. She never answered. It always went to voicemail. All the freaking time it went to voicemail, which really upset me. And I thought, okay, I don't, I don't like this. So, um, then when I would finally get a hold of her, I'd say something like, hey, why don't we get together Saturday and let's go um, do whatever. And she'd come back with, oh, that sounds good. That'll be fun. I'll get back to you Friday and let you know. First couple times, I didn't think much of it. Then after that, I started thinking, wait a minute. I'll get back to you Friday and let you know. What am I, your backup girlfriend? Am I your backup uh, something to do for the weekend? You know, and it started to bother me. So I thought, well, I'll try it again. So again, I called and I said, well, um, how about coming over this, you know, this Saturday? I had just moved into this house, which like I said in my other videos, this, is, this house belongs to the, uh, the lady that I used to take care of. She passed away and they let me, her family let me move in here for now. And I told her, well, come on over, you know, let's see that, you know, she wanted to see the house, she said. So I invited her to come over Saturday. Well, this was the one that said, I'm so done with this, uh, that made it happen. Um, so I went and got, you know, some groceries to make a nice little lunch for us. And then I thought we'd go, because I live near a street called Central, where they have a bunch of really cool shops, you know, little family type shops and hippie shops and cafes and all this. And I thought we can just go up and down and check them all out, just make a nice day of it. So I go and get this stuff. I'm waiting and anxious for Saturday. And she, oh, yeah, yeah, Saturday sounds good. Well, not only did she not show up, but she didn't even call till the next day telling me, oh, I'm so sorry, but my parents came into town. Okay, so that was it for me. Because when it was reversed, where she would call and say, well, let's do this uh, Friday. Uh, we'll meet at this place at 5 o'clock. Then it was set. Then it was, yes, we're doing it. Whenever she would make the plans. Okay, then, bam, yep, it's set. We're doing it. Uh, that just started not working for me. I thought, no, wait a minute here. Okay, so I started realizing that this was starting to cause me stress and it was starting to cause me anger uh, because I thought, well, I make myself available to have this friendship, to actually get together and do things. I don't want to have a friendship with a voicemail, you know. It got to where that's all we were doing. I would leave her a voicemail, she'd leave me a voicemail, back and forth. We, you know, it was just ridiculous. Um, but if I was available, or if I was there when she called, I picked up the phone. I answered, you know. And then I started thinking, I'm not doing that anymore because every time I call her, it goes to voicemail. And that got old really quickly. And, you know, and I wanted to do things that were fun, you know, get out and do things. Get out and just, I don't know, go check out what's going on around the city. Just do things. She wanted to go to a freaking bar. I'm sorry, I'm 57. I have no use for bars. I want no part of bars. She wanted to go to bars to dance. Okay, well, great. If you like to dance a lot, that's great. But I wanted to do something besides go to a bar late at night with a bunch of drunk people. That just isn't for me. Um, so that got a little old. Uh, and then um, when we finally, you know, she, she suggested doing something else, which I went along with. Well, this was this religious get-together about revelations and all this stuff. And it was like, oh, my gosh, it was so depressing. You know, all they did was talk about all the horrible things that are supposed to happen to this earth and to us and what have you. So that was terrible. So I thought, okay, this is just not working. So that was it. I just, you know, she kept ignoring my calls. So I thought, all right, I will do the same to you. Um, so I simply, you know, just stopped. I, I did never return a call. She called a couple times. I didn't return. I thought, I'm going to do to you what you've done to me because I don't have the patience or the desire to sit and argue with somebody on the phone or in person. So I just ignored it. Well, all these months passed by. We're talking from April till a couple weeks ago. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is uh, July here. Um, I get a message from her, a nasty message. Well, you know, I'd appreciate what you've done. You know, I was there for you, and, and I prayed for you all the time, and, 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 and I used to go visit you, and blah, 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 blah. And it was like, no, you didn't. You know, uh, in the very beginning, it was not visiting me. It was going to a bar, you know, going to a freaking bar. And that's just not it for me. So she ends the conversation by saying, this is, um, 
unacceptable. Your behavior is unacceptable. And I thought, oh my God. So I just called her back and of course it went to voicemail and I simply said, you know what, this is not working out. This is not a friendship that's going to work out. We view our friendship differently and what friendship should be. I'm tired of calling you and not answering. I'm tired of never making plans. I'm tired of you saying you're going to do something. Uh, only if, you know, I'll get back to you. Like I'm just supposed to sit around waiting to see if you decide that you want to get together. No, I'm not doing that for anybody. Um, a, a real girlfriend, you know, you're going to call her and you're going to say, hey, let's go have lunch Saturday. And you make the plans and you stick to the plans unless something really important, and I mean important, comes up. Not, oh, I think I decided I want to get my nails done. No, that's, you know, I mean important. Somebody gets sick, there's a death, there's an accident. Uh, you know, well, you know what I'm talking about. So you have to stop and think about uh, what kind of friend you want. Uh, some people have friends all the way back from high school, you know, and that's fine. You know, that's good if you still have those friends. But don't hang on to a friend just because they have become a habit. And don't hang on to them just because you feel guilty that you don't want to, oh, you know, end the friendship. A friendship is, is uh, how can I put it? You know, it's almost kind of like a marriage, you know, between two people. You're, you're having this life together. You do stuff together. You plan things together, whatever. It's, 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 uh, it's in that kind of field, you know what I mean? Where you either have to work at it and make it work, you know, and you give and take, give and take, compromise, or forget it. And so if you're with one of these friends who, who make you feel bad, who put you down, who tease you, who leave you hanging on a string till they're good and ready to go do something. You know, it's up to them. Oh, well, no, I don't feel like doing that. Let's go do this. No, I don't want to do that. Let's go do this. No, I don't feel like doing that. Let's go do this. You got one of those friends. You need to get rid of that friend. And, you know, a toxic friendship, it, it can really wreak havoc on your life and your health. It can make you miserable, unhappy. It can affect every area of your life if you hang on to a friend like that. I also had another one. Anytime we wanted to do something, she wanted me to pick her up, all right? Always me coming to pick her up, to go wherever, no matter what, no matter how often, how long, whatever. Me, 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 pick her up all the time. And in that time, not one time did I hear, hey, let me, let me give you a little bit for gas, you know, since you're always picking me up. No, it was just pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. And then she was just Debbie Downer. Oh my gosh, there was nothing I could bring up. Nothing. You know, I could say, God, it's a beautiful day. Oh yeah, right. I wonder what, yeah. you know, it was one of those kind of things. Or, or we'd be driving around somewhere and I'd say, oh, that is so pretty. Or, oh yeah, you can imagine what it costs. You know, one of those type of personalities. I was like, forget it. I, I'm so done with that. And then I would, you know, lay my heart out, you know, talk about whatever. And she would just be one of these people that would like condemn you, you know, like if you're, I was having an issue with one, um, a couple of my sons and, and she, and I talked to her about what was going, well, this woman turns around and says, well, if you're having problems with your sons, it's your fault. Then you weren't a good mother. That was it. I was like, okay, I'm done. I am so through with this friendship. It is over. That was it. It ended right there. I didn't want to waste another moment on this person. Um, you have to realize that when, when you have a friend like this who makes you feel bad, let it go. You young girls out there, you know, don't, don't hang on to friends that don't make you feel good, that don't make you feel like it's a positive thing to have in your life. It can really cause you trouble down the line. And as you get older, especially like at my age, I have no tolerance for any BS from women anymore. I just have no tolerance whatsoever. whatsoever. I'm sorry, but in my head, there's no reason not to be a kind, nice, just, you know, good person. I, I don't see what the difficulty is. And it doesn't take much to be a friend, you know. I mean, you have to you have to give of yourself. You can't just take, 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 take. And some friends do that. They just, you know, they just want to take, 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 and then wonder why you're not happy in the friendship, right? Mm. So... You need to stop and think about your friends if they're toxic. Um, you know, there are some people out there who they just want to run the show. You know, they just want to be the one who runs the show as a friend. And you need to let those people go. And all they'll do is cause you stress and frustration and anger. And that's not going to do you one bit of good because in the long run, you'll just resent them completely. You know, girlfriends are supposed to be people that you can 
you know, you can plan fun things with, you know, get together and, and um, you know, go, go somewhere, have fun just to relax or, or just go maybe driving around town just to look at things, you know, or plan a nice little lunch, make it at home if necessary, or get together for girly stuff, you know, facials and masks and nails and hair, and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. I mean, I don't know what kind of female you are, but I love that kind of stuff. And you can make all these little plans together that don't take a lot of time or money. You know, you can just go window shopping, go to the mall, check out the cool stuff, you know, just go get a pretzel. Yummy, who loves those pretzels in the mall? I know, I do. Oh, those are a once in a million treat, but oh, how I love those. And think of little things like that to do. And you know, when you do little things for each other, you know, if your friend is real sick or she had, uh, she had a baby or maybe she's you know, going to get married, so you're, there's going to be a shower, whatever, you know, buy them little things, little things, j j a card, or, or if your friend loves candles, buy her a nice little candle, or maybe she, you know, she's one of these people like me, oh, how I love all kinds of body, sh you know, washes, gels, shower gels, and all that, I love that, you know, buy some really nice smelling shower gel, you know, something just nice, you know, girly stuff, and, and, um, and, and be a good friend, you know, don't just be a taker, taker, taker. If you've got a friend who's like that, I want to know what you're doing hanging on to them, okay? This last friend that, you know, I let go of, I was only around her a couple months, and that was when I thought, that's it, that's enough. I don't, I don't need any more. I can see where this is going, um, you know, and you don't want a friend that you have to change. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a difference between <clears throat> maybe you meet somebody and, and there's a few things about them you're kind of, mm, you can maybe bring it up to them, you know, politely and kindly and say, well, you know, it just seems that every time we get together, it's wherever you want to go. And I kind of would like to, you know, go places that I want to go or, you know, something like that. Just put it nicely. And like I said, if she doesn't change or she gets pissed off, well, then I guess you need to think about that friendship. But, um, you know, you know, ladies, girls, your friends are supposed to be the people that you know you can turn to and pour your heart out to and trust com completely. They, they, they're not supposed to be gossiping and telling other people what you told them, you know. They're not supposed to walk around saying, oh, you know what she's told me, you know. That's not a friend. That's a gossip. Um, I'm telling you, you you got you to gotta really look at that person and think, am I happy being in this relationship as a friend with her? If not... I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what what stress level you're waiting for, but I'd say get rid of it pretty quickly. Um, there's no point in hanging on to it, guys. And if you've got a girlfriend who uh, you know likes to gossip, and and you find out she's told somebody something that you confided in her with, well, why do you even want to waste your time talking to her saying, I can't believe you did that. Oh my gosh, why would you, do, you know, why do you want to put yourself through that stress level and the arguing and all the bad feelings when in your heart you know, hey, this friend that I turned to and said, please, you know, this is between you and me. She went and told somebody else. I don't know what there is to work out. It, personally, to me, it's like that's time to say, okay, see you later. Because from then on, you're always going to be wondering, gosh, if I tell her this, Will she tell somebody else? Then, of course, you can't be comfortable in yourself to tell her what you should or you should be able to. And that's what a friend is supposed to be for, so that you can tell them things that maybe you can't tell other people. Sometimes even your own husband, your own mother, your own whoever, you are supposed to go to a friend, be able to go to a friend and say, God, I really need to talk about this, and be able to know that you can trust them implicitly to where it stays between you two. You know, now, if you're discussing somebody else or something, um, you, sometimes you do actually have to speak up and say, look, you know, this is just between you and me, you know, and I'm telling you this out of concern. If you're just a gossip or the friend is just a gossip, well, then you're just a troublemaker. But if it's something that say, say you have, say you both have a friend in common and maybe she's dating this guy or married to this guy who you know is treating her badly or abusing her, you talk between each other, you know, hey, I'm really worried about, um, about Katie, we'll say. I'm really worried about Katie. She's, you know, he treats her so badly. What can we do? And you talk between each other, that sort of thing. But you don't walk around to other friends. Oh, man, Katie's boyfriend, husband, whatever, is treating her like crap. Can you believe that? Blah, blah, blah. That is not a friend. That's a 
biatch, okay? That's what that is. So learn the difference between talking to somebody out of concern for another person as to gossiping all over to everybody. If you've got somebody who's done that, I don't know why you would even call them a friend. I certainly wouldn't. So you need to stop and, and uh, evaluate your friendship. And it's just so simple that there's really not that much to say about it. I mean, if you're happy with that person, if you're feeling good, if they make you feel uh, content in the relationship when you're around them and you get together and they, they play fair where you pick a place to go, she picks a place to go, and you know you both compromise and, and work on what you, know, you want to do as friends and be as friends, and that's great. But the other side is if they don't want to do that, then I don't know what else to say except let them go because what else can you do? You're not going to sit there and fight and beg and try to change somebody. Why would you do that to yourself? That's insane. That's, that's crazy. And so, um, you know, there's just not that much really for me to say about this subject because it's kind of cut and dried. You know, if a friend does you wrong, you know, it's one thing for somebody to do something once and maybe you're thinking, well... You know, maybe they're going through a bad time and they weren't thinking. And you give them a chance. Give them the benefit of the doubt. But then it happens again and again and again. Well, there's your answer, ladies. Let go. You know, just let go. See you later. Take care. And uh, get on with your life. You know, find another friend or whatever. But uh, if you're sitting there causing yourself stress thinking, oh, I don't, you know, if the phone rings and you see it's her, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's her. Oh no, what am I going to do? Well, I think that's a pretty good sign that maybe things aren't working and either you talk with that friend about it <laughs> or you just decide it's over and just tell her point blank, this isn't working out. This friendship isn't working out. Don't argue. Don't, you know, you'll get blasted with questions and I don't know if you feel like answering them. I guess that's up to you. But if you and your heart know that this friendship is not working out, then I say just call and say, leave a message if you didn't get a hold of her, because I'll tell you what, I'll be honest with you, you'll have people who say, oh, well, you should talk heart to heart to, to somebody when you're going to do something like that, but I'll tell you what, if somebody decides they don't want to be my friend, I'd rather they just leave me a message. I really don't want to be sitting face to face with somebody to hear them go, you know what, Lori, I don't like being a friend with you because, and because, well, you know, I said there, ah, uh, okay, uh, you bitch. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I, I don't need that. I just assume listen to a message that says, you know what, well, Lori, this isn't working out. Uh, I hope all goes well for you. Blah, blah, blah. That'd be fine for me. I don't know. That's me. You may be different. You might think that's crazy, but I just as soon hear it that way. So however you want to do it, but you, you know, put an end to it guys. And, um, you know, girlfriends, like I say, if your friend is sick, you go do something to help her. Call her if there's anything she needs. If she's celebrating something wonderful, share in that happiness. Don't show jealousy and, and envy. That's so wrong. You, you show happiness and joy for somebody who's experiencing something wonderful. If your friend is going through a very difficult time in life, you know, don't go give up on her. Don't be like, oh, well, it's already been a month. You know, get over it. That is cruel and that is wrong. Everybody grieves or suffers or gets over or recuperates or whatever in different ways at different times, you know. Obviously, if you have a friend who, let's say she broke up with a guy, and, you know, six months later she still can't say a word without mentioning him, okay, then maybe you need to kind of, you know, hey, Katie, look, I, and I know you and, and uh, whoever, uh, you know, I know you got, I know you really loved him, but you know, you got to start focusing on the future, huh? You got to, you got to start thinking about the future and what, what good is coming to you to kind of try to start getting the subject off of it. And at the same time, giving her a mild hint that maybe it's time to move on without coming out and saying, oh my God, get over him because that would hurt. And you don't want to be a cruel friend and you don't want somebody being cruel to you that way either. So you kind of just, you know talk about it and like, oh, I know it really hurts that you guys broke up, but we got to think about the future. You know, we got to think about the future and, and what good is coming. And the more you say that, each time she brings up that X, um, you know, every time it's brought up, you're having dinner or maybe you went to lunch together and she's like, oh, you know what? I remember when, uh, 
What's a good guy's name? I don't know. We'll say Harvey. <laughs> They're so dorky. Ha I remember when you and Harvey, I mean Harvey, used to have lunch over there. Well, that's when you turn it around and you just go, yeah, well, now we're having lunch. So let's enjoy this. Isn't the food delicious? The more you do that, the more it's going to subconsciously get into her mind that uh, this subject is not, you know, it's not, we don't, we, we don't need to be doing this all the time. Uh, because some people get stuck in a rut where they can't get past that little cycle of, oh my God, we broke up. And sometimes they do need a little shove, a little push to start getting him in the direction of getting over it, you know, and I, I mean kindly, not rude, okay? And so, and if, you, if that's what you need and say you broke up with somebody or something happened in your life, your family, and you're grieving or you're hurt or you're suffering from something, you know, if you've got a friend who, a month, you know, three weeks later, they're like, oh my God, get over it already. I, I think I would pretty much tell that friend to get lost because when you are hurting inside, you have to vent, you have to get it out, you have to get your emotions out there in order to get over it. You can't keep it all piled up inside and then get over it. It won't happen. You got to vent, you got to talk, you got to gripe, you got to bitch, you got to complain, you got to get angry, you got to get sad, you got to cry, you got to go through all that stuff. And then you start to heal. And if you don't have a friend who is willing to do that for you, when you go through some difficult times, well then, uh, I would say that's not a friend, ladies. Not a friend. So, uh, I would say that you need to, you know, think about that. You know, think about your friends, how you feel. If they stab you in the back, you know, if you have found out that they really stabbed you in the back with something, Sometimes, you know what, it's, 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 it's better to not even say anything. It's better to just avoid all calls. Don't even talk to them. Just let it go and die in the wind, you know, just like it never existed. Because sometimes a friend can be very cruel. They can do some things that are very hurtful, very cruel, and they'll blow your mind with, I can't believe she did that. Oh, my God. And if that's the case, let it go. Just, you know, if you can block the number, block the number. Um, sometimes you just need to let something die off not everything needs an explanation not everything has to be talked about and to and well you know the reason i'm breaking this friendship off is because you did it but you said sometimes you just let it drift away and and uh let it go you know sometimes it's just easier that way and for both sides actually because i know that if i um had somebody that i thought was a good friend and they never ever returned the call, then I would, uh, well, what would I think? I'd think, okay, they don't want to be friends anymore, and I would let it go, and that's me. I would just, okay, it's over, it's done, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother anymore. So, you need to kind of, uh, you know, sit back, if you've got some friends in your life right now that are bothering you, look at the reasons why, are they something, you? is it something you can get over? If not, then let it go. Uh, if you're, you know, if your friends are telling you that maybe, uh, I don't like the way you're doing this, that, or the other thing, stop to evaluate it, see, well, is that really true, or are they being the bitches? You know what I mean? You have to stop and think. So anyway, guys, that's really about all I can say about girlfriends, because we all know, you know, in our gut, we, we know when something isn't going right, when we're not treated right. We know when somebody's not treating us the way we should be treated, whether it be a girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, whatever. We know. So follow that little thing you get in your stomach. Follow that little red flag, you know, that pops up in your tummy. It goes, bing, this is not happy time anymore, you know. Follow it. Your gut feeling is usually very, very right. And um, if you suspect that one of your friends is... Um, you know, gossiping or, or uh, you know, just just downing you in, in different ways to people. Well, I just don't see the point wasting one more minute on that person. I think you just need to let it go and move on. That's all, guys. So I hope you have a good evening. Um, there's just really not much else I can think of to say concerning girlfriends because, it's like I said before, it's cut and dry. Either you like the way it's going when you're with them, the way you feel when you're with them, yeah, you know, when they call, oh, good, it's so-and-so. Or if they call and you're like, oh, no, well, you know what to do. You know when things aren't right. Um, I mean, you got to just, you just got to use your head. I mean, if they don't want to get together, 
If you keep saying, well, let's get together, and oh yeah, okay, we'll have to do that sometime. Well, how about next Friday? Well, okay, we'll have to see. Or, okay, how about the Friday after that, or the Saturday after that? Okay, well, we'll see. If you got a friend who keeps doing that, God, get rid of them. What, what do you want that for? That's not a friend. That's, that's a, I don't even know what to call that. Basically, that's kind of like a user. You know, they don't, they don't want to do anything to, to uh, um, make you happy because you say, hey, let's do something. And they're, yeah, okay, let's get together. It's always like, no, no, no. And then when they have nothing to do and maybe no one else to go out with or do something with, then they call you. Oh, hey, let's get together, you know, a month and a half later. Forget that. That's not a friend. And a friend is somebody who you call and talk to on a regular basis. No, you can't call every single day. But if you're lucky enough to where you do have a good friendship like that, where, hey, how'd it go today? I work with terrible. Oh, the kids are driving me nuts. If you have somebody you can vent for a few minutes every day, well, that's fantastic. But not everybody can do that. But you do have to keep in touch. You know, you gotta, you got to talk at least once a week, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're uh, out of state, you know, you got a friend out of state. And I'm talking about friends that are within your vicinity that you can get together with is what I'm talking about. Not friends who are out of state or far away or another city. That's different. Obviously, you know, the time between seeing and talking is different. But if you've got somebody close around you and, you know, fairly close and you can, you know, see them in a matter of minutes, you got to make time to get together. And if you've got a friend who never wants to make time to get together with you, then let them go. Find a friend who does. Because what you end up being is like this beggar, like, oh, hi, can you, you want to get together Friday? Well, I don't know, I'll have to see. Oh, how about next weekend? Well, that sounds good, but we'll have to see. You, you're, you end up being a beggar. You don't want that. You want somebody who makes a commitment to your friendship to say, yeah, let's get together Saturday. We'll have a little lunch and maybe, I don't know, go check out a movie or go hang out at the mall and we'll check out pretty stuff, clothes, what have you, or whatever you like to do. That's what a real friend is all about. And if you don't have that, you're feeling stressed that's why because it's not you're not meshing as friends and that's what you need to do so hope you guys have a good night we will talk to you later um hope uh hope you have a good weekend coming up i i don't know i might do a video tomorrow night it depends but anyway hope you have a good night tonight so see you later guys me and um i don't know if you can see my man here my elvis He's my man. Yes, he is. I love him. <laughs> well, we're going to snuggle up tonight. <laughs> so we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.